Hello to the chicos and the chicas. Welcome back today. Again, we are going to have a look at some masterpieces from the World Cup in Baku. And again, very much like in my last video, which was very poorly viewed, but nonetheless, I'm going to continue with the theme. On the menu today is going to be tactics, insane variations, what is really the essence of fun chess. And we are going to kick off the business with the legend himself in the bottom left corner of my screen, Grandmaster Peter Swidler, an absolute chess legend, a really, really awesome all around dude, a fantastic commentator, really the whole package. And I really genuinely hope that that six in that four digit number is going to change very soon to a seven because this guy is a super GM. All right, so um, his opponent is none other than one of the up and coming Dutch uh, superstars. In this case, it's uh, Jorden van Forest. I'm trying to do justice to the Dutch pronunciation, probably with rather less than more success. And on the menu is the Nidorf. Now, the Nidorf lately has been probably the most reliable Sicilian. Um, opening with the black side despite Anish Giri's course on it. Now nah, I'm joking. Actually, part of the reason is uh, Anish's fabulous work. Um, I have that course um, and it is a sensationally good, very reliable course with the black pieces. And um, I do think that a lot of top GMs um, play the night off on the back of uh, Anish's work. And that could well be the reason why Swidler decided to deviate as early as move seven from the main, main, main lines of the Knight of playing Queen E2. And now what I'm going to do is to put the whole entire opening talk in a big, big bracket and do this. Do, 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 because um, every single step of the way, there could be five more other moves recommended and I don't want this to turn into an opening recommendation. I would like to add as much as I really love the, the cute rook lift. And I also would like to add the fact that black is completely fine here. Absolutely, perfectly fine. But I would say despite the engine's evaluation, which is at this point minus 0 0.07, that Swidler has won the opening battle, not on the board, that in, but in the psychological sense. And that is, is that the players are on their own now. They are left to their own devices. That's actually a very bad figure of speech. Um, and um, yeah, they need to figure out now what's going on in a board full of pieces, full of tactics and a unique setup, unique because of the rook here and pawn g6. These two things make the position really, really <coughs> um, unusual. Knight c5 was played and this got a big fat question mark. When I started analyzing this position um, with the machine, believe it or not, one of the uh, moves that the engine recommended was bishop f8 with the idea of regrouping the bishop to g7. It's really, really bananas. And because of the odd placement of the queen on e1 rather than on d2 or e2, it turns out that the sacrifice ideas never work. So even after king b1, bishop g7, we couldn't go bishop b5, a, b, knight b5 with the idea of hitting this because c2 hangs. So this is just simply losing because of queen c2 check is what I'm trying to say. So this bishop f8 idea was absolutely bananas. Knight c5 was played. This was inaccurate, mostly because it trades off white's worst piece, the b3 knight. Uh, Swidler played king b1 first, but after castles, he correctly evaluated the trade on c5, took it, and dc was already, in my opinion, a way to a very dangerous direction. After e5, black had to find the very computer-like knight g4, when uh, it turns out that white is still um, in a way to find an advantage, or rather, they don't have any edge because... The idea is, is that this knight is going to rear up via h6 to f5, and that is a mighty sturdy defender over there. So yeah, uh, the big mistake was knight d5, and now Swidler is in his element with the attack, knight takes d5, and this is already all over Red Rover by the engine's measure. Bishop d5 and queen e3, all of a sudden, the king side attack is developing beautifully. All the white pieces are in action. And black 
is helpless. C4 was played. Um, I would like to show you a few fun lines here. The engine recommends King H7 instead. Uh, obviously trying to cover G6. At which point, after Bishop E7, Queen E7, Rook G5, threatening H5, King G7, and then G4 would have created a very, very strong attack on the G file. Um, definitely don't want to defend this with black. Instead of King H7, I also tried King G7. This loses absolutely beautifully. Check this out. Bishop F6, check immediately opening up all the files and diagonals toward the black king and if bishop takes then pawn takes check and if king takes we have simply queen g5 check king back and bishop takes g6 and this is absolutely terminal the black king is uh getting mated better still if you go king h7 here then we have got queen g5 threatening with queen takes h5 as well as with bishop takes g6 this is already forced mate in six according to the machine and last but not least the best part if after bishop f6 check black goes to h7 then comes the carnage bishop takes g6 check pawn takes rook takes g6 and after king takes queen g5 king g7 just when the black king would slip away we go like uh uh not happening buddy queen h5 check King back and the marvelous checkmate on g6 concludes these <coughs> spectacular tactics. And so, after queen e3, Jordan decided to try his luck with c4, uh, but this was just adding fuel to the fire. Of course, <coughs> bishop takes g6 was played, and now the checkmate attack is well, it's not really a checkmate attack, but it's a, a brutal kingside attack that can only be fended off by offering uh, insane amount of material bishop e7 obviously now the rook queen combo uh, are going to penetrate penetrate beautifully rook takes g6 king h8 note that king f7 again looks like the king slips away and i think this might have been actually uh the idea that jordan overlooked when he played c4 and that is is that after queen h6 the king actually cannot slip away away via um, e8 because of rook takes d5 a beautiful cooperation among the heavy pieces on the white side rook d5 e d5 and rook e6 wins the queen a superb tactico again i think this is what jordan missed and so realizing that he decided to play king h8 but after the cruel rook check followed by rook takes h5 he realized that there was nothing left to play for the very crude and uh, difficult to stop fret is actually queen g3 check. And after king f7, uh, it's uh, rook h7 check winning the queen. So I tried to, a couple of things here for black, um, but nothing works. The harmony and the cooperation amongst the uh, white line moving pieces is just insane. Rook h8 loses to queen g3 check. And uh, obviously king f8 is not playable because the rook is hanging. If king f7, then queen f4 check. If then king g7, then rook g5 check. And now if king h7, then we have got the beautiful mate. Rook takes d5, e d5, queen f5, and Matotsky on g6. This is really, really, really nice chess. Like, it's sensational. Just rook h5 and the frets are just unstoppable. If king g8 to meet queen g... Well, I mean, yeah. The idea was to meet queen g3 check with queen g7. But of course, rook g5 wins on the spot. But the engine reckons that rook d4 is even stronger here. Which is another testament to the um, elementary power of uh, the line moving pieces. Now it's rook g4 check. Wow. This is, this is just delightful chess by Swidler. So beautiful. And so once again, after rook h5, uh, Jordan decided that enough is enough. And uh, he resigned here. And that, I think, was a really, really nice attack. Very well conducted by Swidler. Once the attack got in motion with knight d5, bishop d5, queen e3, there was nothing, absolutely nothing to stop the white 
pieces here and I could call this video off here but something else caught my eye yesterday that uh, actually never happened on the board but I thought that it was such a, a marvelous tactic that I had to show this to you and I'm going to show this from the blacks perspective um, this was a game between my countryman Hungarian Benjamin Benjamin Gledura against uh, Hikaru and on the menu was the uh, um, Benoni, which is actually, uh, if I play this, meaning the Nimzo, and my opponent plays g3 with the intention of turning this into a Catalan, I play c5 too. In fact, I do have a really cool video on this on my channel in which I discuss the Kasparov game, Korchner Kasparov and a few others. You might want to check it out. I will probably link that in the description of this video. So, again, I'm going to skip everything because I wanted to focus purely on the, um, on the tactical point that was uh, not played in the game, but was an absolutely marvelous idea by Black. So here, after f5, love this by the way, and this f5 break is in that other video by me uh, on YouTube. Uh, take, take, queen c4, and at this point, Hikaru decided to play bishop d7 to step out of the g4 fork. And when I was watching the game live, I noticed that the engine he recommended the very weird looking queen c8. And this is such a typical engine move and it's so beautiful. The idea is, of course, that we want to open up the rook b file, threatening with rook b4 at times. Of course, we want to pressure h3. But this looks like it blunders g4. So what's the story? And then I started analyzing g4 and I is explored some absolutely insanely beautiful lines. So let's go. Rook b4 is the idea. And after queen takes a6, queen takes a6, rook takes a6, bishop d3 wins a clean exchange. And black is ahead. So this is not playable. Then I thought, hmm, okay. What if I go queen e2 instead? And then I thought, oh no, actually that blunders a queen. But hang on a tick, it doesn't and it does at the same time. Because bishop h2 check here doesn't work. King takes h2, rook e2, knight e2. And um, white is still um, capturing another play piece, no matter what black does. And so white will have a rook and two minor pieces for the queen. And that's uh, not good enough for black. But turns out that queen e2 can be refuted here by the absolutely sensational knight g3. What a move. And now after fg, indeed, we do win the queen with bishop d4 check. But this time around, the investment is going to be far less. Because after king h2, rook e2, knight takes e2, we only needed to give up a rook and a knight for the queen and indeed after the spectacular bishop takes b2 um black is on top i would say that perhaps yeah other bishop moves are also possible but bishop b2 continues this beautiful string of tactical strikes where the idea is is that if bishop b2 then rook b2 and if gf then rook takes e2 and if gf then now we have got a queen for three minor pieces but the engine argues that the cooperation amongst the white minor pieces is really, really bad. And after bishop c1, gf5, um, it's not easy to establish um, cooperation among these pieces. I don't know. This is still a bit vague to me because bishop h6 looks like a good move. So let's go back here a little bit. Maybe I missed something here. Hmm, okay, so it's take, take. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is looking like a red hot mess. I would even consider here for black GF5, by the way, because the two passes are really, really tough. But this I'm going to leave as, as a, an absolute hot mess. And then I will show you the final line that I was looking at, which was that after rook b4, so I explored that... Um, Okay, so if queen a6 is no bueno, queen e2 is no bueno, what about queen a2? And then it turns out that black has 
the spectacular piece sec bishop takes g4 now that the white pieces are all locked up on the queen side even these guys and so the white king is extremely exposed to an attack and if you look at it all black pieces are on the king side and so such a sacrifice really should come naturally from the position and even best looking knight e2 allows further sacrificing such as rook g2 king g2 queen g4 check and after knight g3 comes the icing on the cake the cherry on top you would think it's bishop takes i would turns out not good enough because now rook f2 and we don't have more than a perpetual check here due to the fact that the a3 rook is a good defender Mm -mm. No, that's not how we attack. We attack with knight takes g3, pawn g3, and just casually sliding in this silent move, bishop d4, full rook down, and we just go like, hmm, why don't we adjust this bishop a little bit? And now it turns out that rook e2 is absolutely unstoppable. And black is winning. That was a sensational variation and this all stemmed from this queen c8 move which hikaru did not play now the best move the best response according to the engine against this is either rook b3 which completely gives up a pawn and with that the game in my mind or knight d1 which is also ridiculously passive one more thing what's wrong with king h2 here i haven't looked at this but i'm guessing it's gonna be some rook here rook here stuff oh Rook b4. Uh, yeah. So white is forced basically here into queen a6, queen a6, rook a6, bishop d3, losing an exchange again. Because if I drop back, if I drop back to e2 now, this is a check that picks off the queen, so that can't be right. Bishop c3 wins a piece as well. And if queen a2, I'm sure it's gonna be some rook h4. Yeah, it is. It's bishop h3, bishop h3. And then rook h4. And this is already a mate in uh, 7 according to the engine 6 even. Wow. Yeah, this would have been absolutely delightful. Wow, wow, wow. We. And last but not least, I can't help myself but show you these guys. Because this was um, something that I discovered with the engine in the... Uh, in the Dubov game, Dubov lost to Vokaturo in an absolutely chaotic opening, chaotic middle game. If I wanted to analyze that game, a, a, an hour easily could be spent on what went down there. But I'm just going to show you the decisive motive and to show you how incredibly complicated chess is, even on top level and even in positions that seem to offer reasonable clarity. Look at this. Queen b1 check, king g2, queen d1, and the bar indicates a rock solid draw, right? Like 0, 0, 0. So you go like, yeah, sure, easy perpetual check. Knight b7 check, king e7, and queen c7 question mark, queen d7, and uh, white is on the verge of losing already. You go like, what? Like, how is it a perpetual check then? And then I looked at the machine, and the machine goes check, and I'm like, what? How is this a perpetual? And then it turns out that after king e8, we have knight d6 check. That's not necessarily the crazy part because it's easy to see that d takes c is immediately a perpetual check, right? No worries. Absolutely no problem. Oh, king e8 and we have got the perpetual check. No, the tricky thing is to see is that after knight d6 check, it seems that black has king d7. And after queen b5 check, king e7, white ran out of checks. True. But now we have queen c5 going back, recreating the fret. And black has no way to get out of this. This is just insanity. And now this is even a mate threat, right? So I have to, I, I can't just attack the queen hoping that it will be all fine and dandy because it's mate. So um, black needs to do something productive and um, he can't handle the mate threat other than taking on d6 which allows the perpetual check. So once again, the key idea in this position was not to take on c7 per game in this position which allowed the queen interference but queen check 
if the king goes to d7, and you can continue checking and it's all good, I thought. Yes. Yes, so king e8 is forced, and then knight d6 check, king, B5, uh, king d7, queen b5 check, king e7, and we just casually slide back to d6, uh, c5, excuse me, and um, nothing black can do. Nothing black can do. This is so, so beautiful. This is just absolutely insane. So yeah, the tactic themes, the tactical themes seem to be the main, main driving force still behind these sensationally high level games in Baku. Um, I'm very, very excited to continue watching the event. I hope you guys uh, like this little summary of what happened yesterday. I will be back with more videos soon. Please don't forget to sub to like, to super thank me. If you can, please comment down below to make that algorithm go and like me as if that was going to happen. But anyway, let's hope. And I will be back with the next video soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.